우리에게 주시는 하나님의 말씀은 message of God is from Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 11 Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 11 Let's all read it uh, responsively. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man, in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what that nature desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. Altogether, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Now let's all pray together to listen to the message. How are you going to hear the word? Are you going to receive it as a law? The power of the law is the cross, it kills us, but the power of the gospel is life, it saves us. Let's also pray for the overseer who is delivering the message that it can be filled with God's inspiration, that God will give him life, God will give us life, that God will give, that we can all live by listening to this word. Let's pray for the word to be active in us. Let's cry out Jesus once and pray. God our Father, as you have commanded us this Holy Lord's Day as a blessing, we have obeyed and have come before you, God. We come before you, we worship you and we serve you, God. All our Songra saints, our Songra members throughout the country, throughout the world, God, be with them all. Anoint your servant's lips and let him speak the word that you desire to give, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's sing him 184. Let's clap our hands. Loudly, Yes, 
예수의 피밖에 없네 나를 정케 하기는 예수의 피밖에 없네 사죄하는 증거도 예수의 피밖에 없네 예수의 글린 피 나리게 하오니 귀하고 귀하다 예수의 피밖에 없네 나의 죄속하기는 예수의 피밖에 없네 나는 공로 없더라 예수의 피밖에 없네 예수의 흘린 피 나리게 하오니 귀하고 귀하다 예수의 피밖에 없네 평안함과 소망은 예수의 피밖에 없네 나의 의는 이것뿐 예수의 피밖에 없네 예수의 흘린 피 나리게 하오니 귀하고 귀하다 예수의 피밖에 없네 영원토록 내할말 예수의 피밖에 없네 나의 잔이 제목은 예수의 피밖에 없네 예수의 흘린 피 나리게 하오니 귀하고 귀하다 예수의 피밖에 없네 아 이제 그 어, 금요일부터는 또 이제 From Friday, if God permits, and before, for those who finish b e r e a Academy, we had a master's class, something called like a master's class, where we continued teaching them the picture of God's will. On Friday nights, uh, during the Friday prayer meeting time, from 8 p.m., we're going to pray. We're going to study Berea. So, at Shingil Sanctuary. And for a while, Shingil Sanctuary, uh, where Lord's Day service will not be held at Shingil Sanctuary for, for the time being, it will be here. Please remember the Bible verse we read together. Now let's read the sermon outline together. Let us live by the Holy Spirit. Let's all read it together. God is one and only. He sent His Son to the world, namely the Son of Man, and made Him suffer death on the cross to save those under the law. The cross is the power of the law. Therefore, since Jesus Christ satisfied the requirements of the law, we all died together with Him. And since Jesus Christ rose again by the righteousness of God, we have also been raised to life in Him. We have secured the testimony of this through baptism. Those who are in Jesus are spiritual people who ought to live by the Holy Spirit, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Man lives not by the things of the flesh, but by the Spirit. Thus we must not be slaves of the law, that is, slaves of sin, but be free by the Holy Spirit. Men of the flesh cannot please God. We have to be men of the Holy Spirit. If we have the Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, He will raise our mortal bodies also. Only those that live by the Holy Spirit are men of, God, men of Christ. The way the church can succeed is not by the will of man, but by the Holy Spirit only. There must be the works of the day of the Pentecost. Reformation cannot happen by man's will or words. Only when there is revival by the Holy Spirit will everything change. Let us be the church and family filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
God is one and only. All other spirits, all other spirits and gods of this world were created by God. But only God is the self-existing God who exists from eternity past to eternity alone by himself. He is the one and only God. And God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is the triune God. And what we have to know very carefully about this here is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There are three persons, three persons, that is three personalities, but what he fulfills is God's will, which is only one. So the Father's will was set and determined, and the Son came and fulfilled God's will, and what the Son fulfilled, the Holy Spirit testifies to. So, the Son does not disobey the Father's will, but says, Father, may your will be done. And the Holy Spirit does not disobey that will, but respects it. Every, only the will of God, only the one will of God gets fulfilled. That's what God does. So when we talk about the will of God, although it seems like we will, we know the will of God, so many people don't know, and so they they get lost. The Bible speaks of the will of God. It's the scriptures, the holy scriptures that speak about the will of God. The will of God. What is the will of God? Uh, is, is it God's will that I do a business or that I become a public servant? So many people are lost because they don't know what to do. But the will of God is not complicated. It's not complex. We learn about we learned about the picture of God's will in Berea Academy. We talk about the will of God in a parable, in a picture. It's a picture, the picture of God's will. So we are explaining the will of God in a picture. That is, we understand the will of God in a picture. It means it's a parable. We understand it as a, in, through a parable. So what is the will of God? In the Old Testament time, there was a temple man made by the hands of men. And this was representative of Jesus, Jesus Christ. All the sacrifices in the Old Testament, killing cattle, sheep, and shedding their blood, were all symbolic of Jesus. All of them were speaking of Jesus. Plants come out uh, in spring and they die in autumn. All these living things, even the green uh, plants, are symbolic of how Jesus died and rose again. It's it's all a picture of, it's a representation of his resurrection. So what is the will of God? No one has ever seen God. None of us has ever seen God. No one. From the beginning till now, nobody has ever seen God. No, no man has ever seen God, but when Jesus was baptized and came out of the water, God said, This is my Son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. This is the will of God. Jesus Christ is the will of God. So Jesus said, I came to this world the reason I appeared in this world was not to do my own work, but to 
fulfill the Father's will, to do the will of the one who sent me. So when we say the Lord's Prayer, we say, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's not by the humans in this world, but first, God fulfilled His will in heaven. He is my son whom I love. That's the will of God. Some people say, how, how can the one born from a person, a human being, be the son of God? How can a man be the son of God? He grew up drinking his mother's milk. So how can he be a son of God? How can he be God? Even if people criticize and do not believe and try to make an issue of that, God's will does not change. He said, this is my son whom I love. That's the will of God. What is it that you and I believe? We believe in the will of God. We follow God's will. Because God believes so, we also believe that. Because God insists so, I insist so. He is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. On the mountain of transfiguration, even at that time, God said of him, this is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. Listen to him. He said in Matthew chapter 17, verse Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. Oh no. I'm going to believe according to my own knowledge. I'm going to believe how I want. I'm going to follow my feelings and my emotions. That's not right. Our emotions, our feelings, our will, our knowledge. We have to get over that. We have to go beyond that. We have to believe according to God's will. And the will of God is, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. This is what he said of Jesus. So in heaven, God's will was already fulfilled. And on the earth, it has to be fulfilled too. When John the Baptist said of, uh, he spoke of Jesus saying, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He testified about Jesus. And he said that he is the Son of the Lamb of God. In John chapter 5, Jesus said, John testifies about me, but John's testimony is like a lamp that a man lights in the dark night. If you turn a lampstand on, maybe the surrounding area might be a bit bright, but the rest of the the, but the rest of the place is dark. Only that small area where the lamp is lit is bright. So John's testimony about Jesus is very small, like a lampstand that is lit by man. So Jesus said, So I do not receive the test. I do not want the testimony of man. There is one who testifies about me. The words I have spoken will testify of me, and my Father who sent me will testify of me. So in regards to Jesus, man's knowledge, theologically, people talk about things theologically and we human beings think that scholars who are full of knowledge should be well respected and we do respect them. But with that knowledge, they cannot know God. With that knowledge, they cannot prove God. They cannot testify of God. Knowledge, their knowledge is just like a lampstand that a person lights. When the sun rises, that lampstand is useless. It's meaningless. 
The Father testifies about me, Jesus said. And then he said, when the counselor, when the advocate, the Holy Spirit comes, when the Holy Spirit who comes out of the Father comes, he will testify about me. And you have also been with me from the beginning. And so you will testify of me by the Holy Spirit. He said in John chapter 15, verse 25 and 26. We have been saved. We receive God's grace. And what do we say? What, Jesus, what did Jesus say? Do not leave the city of Jerusalem, but wait. When the Holy Spirit comes, did he say you're going to make a lot of money? When the Holy Spirit comes, you're going to be successful in this world? When the Holy Spirit comes, you're going to move to a better place? Jesus didn't say any of that. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, you'll receive power. And you will be my witnesses. So... God the Father already said of Jesus, This is my Son whom I love with Him, I'm well pleased. He already declared His will. He already testified about His Son. So in the same way, the Holy Spirit will testify about Jesus. How? People killed Jesus. They physically killed Him, for sure. They, legal, they, they killed Him legally, but... By the law of Rome, by the Roman law, by their powerful force, Jesus died. He was clearly dead. But God raised him to life. And it said in the Bible that the Holy Spirit raised him to life. He is without sin. Because he is without sin, although he carried the sin of mankind and died, he is righteous. And so the Holy Spirit raised him to life. It said in verse 11, And he will also raise your mortal bodies. The Holy Spirit will also raise your mortal bodies too. That is the body that you will that will die. The Holy Spirit is the one who, will, who testifies about Jesus. So wait for the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive power. And finally, you will be my witnesses. What is the final thing that we have to do after receiving the Holy Spirit? We have to become witnesses of Jesus. What we have to do, finally, the final purpose of receiving the Holy Spirit is that we become witnesses of Jesus. On the earth, what we have to do is to testify about Jesus. When he returns, we will discard this flesh and our souls that have been nurtured by the word of God will be transformed instantly and be and put on a body that has flesh and bones. And through the resurrection, we will enter heaven and have eternal, have eternal life. But while we're on the earth, while we are living on the earth, the will of God that we have to fulfill is that we become witnesses of Jesus. You have to understand that very well. Oh, is it God's will that I get a job right now? Is it God's will that I start a business? Oh, I don't know what His will is. Oh, I'm, I feel so frustrated. Please don't do that. We already know what the will of God is, that Jesus is the will of God. Jesus said in John chapter 6 so many times, I did not come to do my own will, but I came to do the Father's will. The Father's will is that whoever believes in me is saved. Jesus is a Savior, in other words. God said of Jesus, He is my Son, and just as the will of God was fulfilled in heaven, because Jesus is the will of God. Christian faith is to believe according to the will of God. It is not by man's own cultivation that we believe, but we believe according to the will of God. 
So on the earth, we also have to fulfill God's will, testifying that Jesus is Christ. Although he came in the land of the Jews and he lived in the town of Nazareth and grew up in the town of Nazareth, and by his appearance there is nothing to admire about him, he is the one who received the testimony of God. He is the Son of God. He is the Son whom God loves. He is the one that pleases God. Testifying that is our faith. So that's why we talk about our confession, our faith confession. When we say faith confession, people think, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, so I should have a better life. And now that I believe in Jesus, I should be kind. As Since I believe in Jesus, I need to be gentle. We are not confessing a change in our character. We have to confess our faith, what we believe. What is it that we are pursuing? What is the confession of our faith? Jesus Jesus is the Son of the living God and Christ whom He sent. That's what we testify to. The will that was said in heaven that was fulfilled in heaven is now being fulfilled on earth. God sent the one who was in his bosom and let him die on the cross. In other words, it's zero. It's, it's, and when Jesus came out of the water, God said of him, This is my son whom I love with him. I'm well pleased. In the same way, we have we testify that the one who received God's testimony is the Son of God and the Christ sent by God. We testify to that. And so God's will is fulfilled on earth. So from by the church on the earth, testifying of Jesus is God's will being fulfilled on earth. So God's will must be in uh, our will must be in accord with the will of God. Our testimony is the same as the testimony of God. Why are we being persecuted? Because we say that Jesus is not a human being. A human being is born between man and woman because God said the man and woman will be one. Jesus is not someone who came between man and woman. He came from God. What comes from man and woman is a human being, but God came, is a man who came from heaven. And we believe that although Jesus was conceived in Mary's body and was born through Mary's body and grew up by drinking her milk, Still, He is the Son of God, and He is Christ sent to save us. We testify to that. What is our testimony? The will of God. We testify to the will of God. God has determined His will like so. There are so many people, there are great prophets, there are great scholars, there are great high priests and great kings. But it's none of them. Only Jesus, who comes from Nazareth, only him, uh, only of him, Jesus, did God say, This is my son whom I love, with him I'm well pleased. Listen to him. He even said this on the mountain of transfiguration. So, God's will that was fulfilled in heaven, we, our church, we, the church, have to fulfill on earth. What is the faith of the church? Let's all say it together Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Loudy. What is, what is your faith? What is the faith of the church? Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You have to be sure, you have to be clear. Today, so many people become corrupt and fall away. Let me tell you the reason why people fall away. What is the will that we have to fulfill on earth? Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What is it that our Songwak Church has to fulfill? Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What is, what is the will of God that you have to fulfill in your families? Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. 
from the moment we are born till we die. What is it that we have to do? Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's right. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 16? Simon, son of Jonah, blessed are you, for this was not revealed to you by man. This was what God already said. This is what God said. When he was baptized, God already said this. And on Mount of Transfiguration, God said this to the disciples. This is my son whom I love with him. I'm well pleased. Listen to him. This was not revealed to you by man, but by whom? But by God. Of course, you are listening through Kidon Kim, but you are not. This does not come through man. 2000 years ago in the Jordan River and also on Mount Transfiguration, God already said this. This is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. God told this. God told him this. So those who believe what God says is blessed. That's what it says. People will go beyond the will of God and seek blessings. And so they are knocking where there is no door. We have to be clear. God already gave to the world who was in his bosom and out of all the people in this world the one that appeared to have nothing who wasn't who didn't even stand out who grew up in the town of Nazareth which is least favored to him God said this is my son whom I love with him I'm well pleased and God fulfilled his will God confirmed this and in the same way this will must be fulfilled on earth that's our faith our faith be fulfilled the faith of our church the faith of our family every one of our faith be fulfilled on earth in the same way do you have the will of God in you? The will of God that He fulfilled in heaven, that He confirmed in heaven, is the will of God confirmed in your heart. Then say Amen. Let's clench our fists together and say, as if we are holding on to His cloak, Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's all say it together. Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So our whole life, why do we have to receive power? Because we have to testify about Him. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power and you'll be my witnesses. We have to testify about Him. Until the day we die, what do we do? Jesus went up into heaven. Jesus went up into heaven. And even after He went into heaven, He is at work with His witnesses. So in Mark chapter 16, verse 14, Jesus says, those who believe, those who believe and are baptized will be saved. They will be saved. And then he said, these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, in Jesus' name, they will cast out demons. So what does the Bible say? By the faith that we have, the demons will tremble. The demons will tremble, they said in First John chapter 4, demons tremble. Before us, the believers, all demons tremble. They shudder. They tremble. So, we, we have the faith that makes the demons tremble. But even if we have been in the church for 10, 20 years, why don't the demons tremble before us? It's because you don't believe in the will of God. It's because you do not testify to the will of God. So, those who believe Jesus as a Savior and who have been baptized, will have these signs accompany them. They will cast out demons in Jesus' name. In, and they will speak in new tongues. 
Do you know what they say in Shincheonji? This is how you can actually distinguish the Shincheonji people and not if you can distinguish them, if people next to you, if they are from Shincheonji or not. Because what they do is they call it demon tongues. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that speaking in tongues is your spirit praying to God. It's not even the Holy Spirit speaking. The Holy Spirit enables your spirit to speak. And each person's spirit speaks, each person speaks in tongues. It said in Acts chapter 2, verse 4. So some people say, some people think that it's the Holy Spirit speaking. And, and then they go, blah, 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 the Holy Spirit told you to sell bread. Or the Holy Spirit told you to sell noodles. That's not what happened. It's not fortune telling. The Holy Spirit works in me and enables me to speak. He gives me utterance. And it is your spirit that prays to God. Your spirit utters mysteries to God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, verse 11, of to four thirteen, it says, "Only the spirit of man knows the things of man. So, what's in our heart? We speak with our lips what we understand, what we know with our reasonality. But whether my spirit is dead, whether my spirit is sick, whether my spirit is corrupted or fallen, there are many people who don't know it; they just live." But finally, we received grace and we now our spirit can directly speak to God. We have our tongues loosened so that we can speak directly to God. That's why it's a speaking in tongues. Our, we have been given a new tongue. A new tongue has been given to us. It's a tongue. He gave us a new tongue. So in the past, when we were sinners, we were like we we were mute. Our spirits were mute. Our spirit was not able to speak to God about our state. But when the Holy Spirit came in us, the Holy Spirit gave us utterance, so that we can now, so that our spirit can now speak mysteries to God. So Apostle Paul said. I give thanks to God that I speak tongues more than anyone else. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, it talks about those who do not speak in tongues, that they are ignorant. It called those who couldn't speak in tongues as ignorant people, that ignorant people will dis uh, despise this, will criticize this. But there are some people who go against saying speaking in tongues and they call it demon tongues and that's not even in the bible what they're saying is not even in the bible it is your spirit speaking to god when you're speaking in tongues those who are saved their spirit prays to god when you speak in tongues in our church in order to distinguish ourselves from chinchanji we have to speak in tongues whenever you meet together speak in tongues praying in tongues speak in tongues and those people will just leave because they don't want to hear it because they say that it's called demon tongues so you have to discern yourself distinguish can Satan cast out Satan? even Jesus said so how can Satan cast out Satan? Jesus clearly said, He who believes in me will cast out demons in my name and speak in new tongues, lay their hands on the sick and they will be healed. And then, what did he say? The disciples went out and testified that, the, that Jesus who sat down in heaven was at work with them, testifying to them. So our whole life, while we are living in this world, what we have to do is to testify of Jesus. Even though he has gone into heaven, he is at work with us when we testify to him. How is he at work with us? 
You will cast out demons in my name, speak in your tongues, pick up snakes with your hand, lay your hands on the sick and they will get well. The Lord Jesus spoke of this and went up to heaven and was at work with them that he testified to them with following with signs and wonders. So even after Jesus went to heaven, the saints on the earth made sure that the will of God was fulfilled on earth as well. And so they testified that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is Christ sent by God, the Savior. And the enemy cannot overcome that. The gates of Hades cannot overcome that. What is our faith? It's the will of God. Upon this rock I will build my church, Jesus said. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On this rock, the will of God that God fulfilled and the will of God that gets testified to by the lips of the saints on the earth. Upon this rock, upon this rock, that confesses, Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Upon this confession, upon this faith, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. In your families, you cannot overcome demons with anything else. You can't overcome the devil by anything else. Only this, the, the, the gates of Hades cannot overcome this. We can't overcome the gates of Hades with anything else, but with this, with our faith, Lord, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. With this sure faith, without any doubt of this, even though there are conflicts in the family, even though there are arguments in the family, they might fall, but if you have this testimony, if you fulfill the will of God, all our life we have to fulfill this will to the moment we die. Those who fulfill this will, the gates of Hades will not be able to overcome. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Because God knows, He said, This is my son whom I love with him, I'm well pleased. But it's already been 2,000 years. So, how can we hear the word of God? How can we hear Him? Those who heard the word of God at that time testified. The word of God they, that these people heard, they, they testified and they have written it in the Bible. And so, the Bible should not be interpreted on our own. For those who received the Holy Spirit received inspiration from God and have written in the Bible. He said in first, uh, Second Corinthians chapter one. Oh, sorry, Second Peter chapter one. So this Bible, these scriptures were not written by man's wisdom. It was not by man's knowledge. But those who received the Holy Spirit were received inspiration of God and have written. If you believe that, say Amen. And for that reason, this book is different to all other books. There are holy scriptures used by other religions. It's very knowledgeable. There are, it's filled with words that are full of knowledge. That's what they have chosen to put in those scriptures. But this was not written by the Holy Spirit. This Bible was written by the Holy Spirit. Even though people go into the same water to be baptized, the baptism given by John in the Jordan River is a baptism of water only. The Holy Spirit was not given because the Holy Spirit was not given to anyone at that time. Only after Jesus ascended into heaven did Jesus send the Holy Spirit. From then on, those who received the Holy Spirit Spirit gave baptism and so they were baptized by the Holy Spirit as well. So although it's the same form of baptism that John gave, that is, it's given with water, but it, the latter is the baptism given by water and the Holy Spirit. So the baptism that the Jews received, they only received with water. But what did we receive it with? We received it by the Holy Spirit. We received baptism by water and the Holy Spirit. Let's all say it together. I, we were baptized by water and the Holy Spirit. Our families were baptized by water and the Holy Spirit. Now, some people say, oh, baptism, oh, it's too cold. I don't want to go in the water. So they despise it and they look down on it. They take it very lightly. 
I've never heard of anyone who was baptized and who have gotten a cold. I was baptized in the middle of winter in an icy cold water and still I didn't have a cold. So I was baptized and I was baptized by the Holy Spirit. In summer, people go dive in the water. I've seen them so many times diving in the water. Some people say to me, Baptist Church just soaks a person in the water. We are not soaking them in the water. We are being baptized by the Holy Spirit. That's the difference. In the same way, the Bible... Although it's a printed material and it was written by human hands, how is it different? It was received. The inspiration was received by the Holy Spirit. So what did they write it by? Please confess it with your lips. When I tell, I tell my grandchildren, even to my son, I used to say, when you go to school, it's not a matter of how smart you are. It's all with the metho methodology. Look at the teacher's mouth and follow exactly what the teacher says. And that's what I told my grandchildren, and that you will do well at school if you do that. So people who do not do well, even though the teacher says talking, they just listen. But those who follow what the teacher says, who looks at their mouths and copies what they say, they will not forget. So even in the um, letter lettering school, letter schools, they they copied and followed after what the teacher said, and so they never forget how to write Chinese characters, what they learned, because they follow the teacher. Just listening with your ears is not enough. So we must see with our eyes, hear with our ears, and say it with our mouths. You have to confess with your mouth here. Let's all say it together. The Bible was written by those who received the Holy Spirit by the inspiration of God. They are written by the inspiration of God. Your baptism, the baptism you received, was it given, was was it just you soaking, soaked in the water or were you baptized by the Holy Spirit? You have to be clear about that. We became Christians baptized and if we're not sure about that, then we won't be sure about the Bible either. So we believe in the Bible. This Bible is made up of the Old and New Testament. Now, in the time of Jesus, about 92 years after Jesus ascended into heaven, the New Testament was made. So there's about a hundred years gap between the Old and the New Testament. The Old Testament, however, was present in the time of Jesus. So the Old Testament is something you read. It's not something you believe, it's what you read. You keep reading the Old Testament. Why? What is it that the what is it that the Old Testament is trying to say? What is it that is trying to say? We read it again and again and again. What appears in the Old Testament are all parables, mostly parables. And so, if you believe it as it is, you can't be saved because it's a parable. What is it that the Bible is trying to tell us? The Bible talks about the blood of sheep, but it's a parable. So if you believe in the blood of sheep today, then you can't be saved. If you believe in the blood of cattle, you cannot be saved. This is a parable. Finally, why is it that why do we read the Bible so that we may have eternal life? 
When we read the Bible, when you read the Old Testament, it's hard to understand. When we, uh, uh, everything in the Old Testament is a parable about Jesus, it was speaking about Jesus. Oh, is that right? So the Bereans daily, daily read the scriptures and they realized, oh, this was a parable. The temple was a parable. All the instruments in the temple was a parable. All these sacrifices were parables. And they believed in Jesus. This is the Bereans. So you read the scriptures, because, but these scriptures testify about me, Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 39. And in verse 40, Jesus said, you do not come to me to have eternal life. Jesus was frustrated. The scriptures is a guide. It's a, like an address book that leads you to me. When you go to your friend's house, when you go to your relatives, or when you go to visit some place, you need to know the address. Oh, what was the number? What was the street number? You have to know the address. Even if you go 10 times, you have to have the address. You need to know the address. But when it goes to your house, when, it's, when it comes to your house, you don't need to have an address. Raise your hand if you carry an address of your house. None of us. The Old Testament is like an address. It's like an address. And it leads us to Jesus. It speaks about Jesus. Who is Jesus? God says, This is my son whom I love with him. I'm well pleased. By God's will, God confirmed this already. From then on, we don't need the address. Only Jesus. So after we know Jesus, we came to know Jesus to say that about 20 years of age. So what do we do after we came to know Jesus? Oh, since I know Jesus, I have to now do Bible study again? What happens? That means it's you are trying to find the address again. You, your house is already confirmed. You don't. Once you know your house address, you don't know. You don't need to know the address anymore. You have your house already. This is my house. It's definitely my house. Now, what should I do? Oh, should I get another? I need to find another address and start again. Today, so many people misunderstand what good faith is about. Some people have come to know Jesus, they believe in Jesus, and so they have united with Jesus. In order to become united with Jesus, that is, in order to unify their will with the will of God, just as Jesus said, the Father and I are one, just as Jesus and the Father are one, may they be one with us. We have to unify our will with God's. In order to do that, we were baptized. Now, baptism is about unifying with Christ. Because we have unified with Him, we are unified with Him in His death and resurrection. In other words, His death and resurrection is my death and my resurrection. We have united with Him. We have unified ourselves with Christ. After we have been unified, since we were young until we die, what do we do? We become witnesses of Jesus. Whoever we meet, we testify about Jesus. There are so many people in this world, they get amazed when they when somebody says they've seen something so mystical. Say in Union Do, um, there was a pulpit and the, it was made of wood. And somehow, 
the the uh, the aging of the wood looked something like the portrait of Jesus. And so so many people came to see that because they said it was something mysterious. I've seen a lot of dining tables that have patterns like that on it, actually. It's just that the pattern on the wood is made like that, that it looks like a person's face. That's not what we need to pursue or go after. The testimony of God, when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River and came out of the water, God said, this is my son whom I love with him and well pleased. We have to understand. He confirmed his will and he testified to his will in the same way we have united with him and now we become witnesses of Jesus. All the days of our life we live as witnesses of Jesus. So until the day we die. So witnesses don't need to find the address again. We have become witnesses. That's what good faith is about. Those who have faith become witnesses of Jesus. We are now you know, united with Christ, just as God and Jesus are one. Through baptism, we have united with Him and we became one with Him. So now, just as God testifies, has testified about him, we become witnesses of him who testify about him. Jesus said, the Father testifies about me, the Scriptures testify about me, my Word testify about me, the Holy Spirit testifies about me, you testify about me. True. All our life, we, we have to testify about Jesus Christ, who is the will of God. What, what do we testify? Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Well, once again, what do we testify? That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Even if they, somebody threatens to kill you, we have to confess this. Jesus, for this, we become martyrs. There are so many people who, who become martyrs for the wrong thing, but this, for, this is what we become martyrs for. Whoever we meet, we testify of Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God, the man of Nazareth. He is the Son of God, the one who died on the cross, who was treated as a sinner, who suffered and who, who was crucified on the cross as a sinner. He is the Son of God. Although the world betrayed Him, although the world betrayed Him, I believe that He is the Son of God. I believe Him. Till the day we die, we have to testify to this. That's what our faith is about. That's. But some people, they studied Bear Academy, they studied everything, but then they say, Oh, pastor, what else do I have to learn about? What I, what else do I have to know? Well, you've learned everything. Well, I'm sure there's more. So these people think that faith life is all about learning. Since I study Bible here, maybe I'll go somewhere else. And then they go somewhere else. They go, to, they want to hear what they've never heard. So they go away to hear something that they've never heard here. They already found Jesus and that's it. Once you find Jesus, that's it. But they put Jesus aside and they think, oh, Jesus, why don't you sleep for a while? And they go away looking for something that they've never heard. They want to hear about something new, something that sounds mystical, mysterious. The Bible is something that you don't research. It's not something that you interpret. In Berea, we emphasize this. If you've studied Berea Academy, you would know very well what is it that we teach. You do not interpret the Bible. You do not research the Bible. Scholars, those people might research the Bible. We, we do not research the Bible. But the Bible is something you believe. We believe the Bible as it is. But because people try to interpret the Bible, they talk about something else. So they say that Shinchonji Imani is the advocate. They say that he is the advocate. And they say, oh, it's amazing. In order to meet him, I have to know very well. 
They want to hear something mystical. They say that um, they, Adam and Eve ate the uh, got, uh, fruit of knowledge of good and evil, and Eden is the woman, and the woman's um, reproductive system is in the middle of the woman. So when Adam ate the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they say that Adam committed adultery with Eve, and so it sounds it sounds quite mystical, and so they go fall for that. If you research the Bible, see, once you know Jesus, but you go into, you research the Bible and you, you seek something else and you will go somewhere else. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the gate, I am the truth, I am the life. Now, if you don't go through this gate, if you don't go through this way, if you leave and you go somewhere else and you are a thief and a robber, after you came to know Jesus, if you say, I'm going to study the Bible more, I'm going to research the Bible more, if you are interested in that and that's what you pursue then you will go seeking something else once you finish that study and then go somewhere else this person doesn't have Jesus they are only focused on memorizing the Bible and interpreting the Bible however they want so although they study Berea in our church they fall for some other heresy and and Chinchonji and, and what, what not do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you understand? We, our church members, we need to confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, whom he sent. If we know this, how do we know this? We knew this by God. God already said this in the Mount of Transfiguration. It is by God that we came to know this. And once we know, then on this rock we have to build our spirit. Upon this rock we have to build our church. Apart from this, if we seek some other Savior and seek the Son of God elsewhere, and if we, talk, if we seek to do Bible study elsewhere, seek to interpret the Bible some other way, we will all fail. Once we lose Jesus here, then we will fall. We will fall completely. And we will become corrupted in our faith completely. This is the greatest warning for us Christians that we do not fall. Once we fall, there is no way that we can turn back because such a person cannot receive Jesus in. They do not believe because they have determined to perish. I studied in the Presbyterian Seminary for a long time, but I didn't become a Presbyterian pastor because I do not accept their predestination a theory. But what we have to pay attention is that those who don't believe have determined not to be, those who have determined not to believe are already determined to perish. If they determine not to believe then they have been destined to perish because there's no answer for them. There is no other way for them. And in verse four it says the gods of this age, this, the gods of this world, have blinded their minds so that they do not believe, so that they cannot believe. Jesus is the image of God. He is the image of God's being. Jesus is God. He is the image of God's being. Jesus is the Son of God. And he is Christ sent by God. That's what we believe. And this is what God testified to. This is what we learned from God. Which uh, seminary did you graduate from? Did you graduate the seminary of God or what else? What? God taught us this. God is the, God is the greatest witness. God testified to this. 
But after we came to know Jesus, do not go anywhere else. Stay he here. Once you know Jesus, remain here. Don't try to wander away. You will fall if you do so. You cannot come back. There are some people trying to divide our church, trying to make members leave our church. So there are so many people who have already left our church. They have been divided, separated from our church. Once they leave, they might try to figure out their own identity and they will end up somewhere odd. When I was teaching the 24th class of Bear Academy, so for so many years I read the Bible again and again and again and again and I had read the Bible 128 times and what I continue I testified it and I realized that there is nothing more beyond this I explained no matter how many times I teach, I teach, I teach. I can't teach more than this. I, if I go beyond this, then it will lead to corruption. It will lead to depravity. Stay awake here. If you go beyond being a witness of Jesus and you want to do Bible studies more, then you're going to fail. You will perish. This Bible testifies about Jesus. Once you have found Jesus, that's enough. You have reached your destination. Let's all say together, Jesus is my destination. He's the destination of my faith. He's the end of my faith. If you believe that, say Amen. Please stand, everyone. If you are certain and if you understood this, say Amen. Say Amen. Since you have found Jesus, be filled with Jesus. How? What does the Bible say? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, I do not want you to be ignorant about what is spiritual. When you were Gentiles, well, you were led by idols, you were led by demons, by your feelings. But without the Holy Spirit, nobody can confess Jesus as Lord. In verse 4, he said, There are many works, but only one God. Many duties, but one Lord. Many gifts, but one Holy Spirit. There is only one. And in verse 7, it says, He gave us the manifestations of the Holy Spirit for our good. The Holy Spirit comes in us to do what? To, 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 to do what? So that we have knowledge, the word of knowledge, message of knowledge by the Holy Spirit. Who is knowledge? Jesus. And by the Holy Spirit, the message of wisdom. What is the message of wisdom? It's Jesus. He gives us faith by the Holy Spirit. What is our faith? It's Jesus. By the Holy Spirit, the performing of power. It's Jesus manifested inside us. That's why the Holy Spirit works inside us. Once we have become witnesses of Jesus, the Lord who resurrected will be at work with us from heaven and the Holy Spirit will will display, will show Jesus from within us. Will, the Holy Spirit does not work where there isn't Jesus. He will only display Jesus. So let us all pray together. Pray, Lord, by the Holy Spirit which you have given me, let Jesus be displayed in my family, from within me, from my face, from my language, from, from my knowledge, from everything of me. Let Jesus be displayed with power. Let Jesus be displayed. We'll pray together.